Hello and welcome to this presentation on leaky gut syndrome. I'm Dr. Gerard Guillory, president and founder of the Care Group PC, an integrative functional medicine practice in Aurora, Colorado. As a board certified internal medicine specialist, I have been practicing since 1985. My introduction to leaky gut syndrome was through my study of patients with irritable bowel syndrome or IBS. I became interested in IBS many years ago, wrote a book about IBS in 1989, and published three updated editions since then. The most recent book is titled IBS, A Doctor's Plan for Chronic Digestive Troubles. One of the key points that I have discovered over my years of treating patients with IBS is that leaky gut syndrome, a diagnosis I was never taught in medical school, almost always contributes to their symptoms. I have since created a protocol to heal leaky gut syndrome. Its success in patients with IBS prompted me to explore the role of leaky gut in other conditions. What I have found is this. When we use functional medicine approaches to heal a leaky gut, we are able to create dramatic improvements, not only in people who have IBS, but also in those with allergies, autoimmune conditions, chronic pain, and other forms of chronic disease. I see this repeatedly in my practice, and thousands of studies have now been published in the medical literature that confirm my experience. Before we go any further into leaky gut, let's take a step back to introduce what I mean by functional medicine. Functional medicine is an approach to medicine that strives to find the root cause of the problem, considers how all of the organ systems interrelate, and uses natural treatments whenever possible. Functional medicine is different than conventional medicine I call conventional medicine the disease drug model. In conventional medicine, the diagnosis determines the drug. In functional medicine, while an accurate diagnosis is still important, we aim to uncover why the diagnosis is there. Conventional medicine is the medicine of what, whereas functional medicine is the medicine of why. In addition, when conventional medicine looks at each organ system separately, Functional medicine looks at how all systems work in concert together. What is leaky gut? Leaky gut is exactly what it sounds like. The gut, the intestinal tract, is leaky. Things pass through that shouldn't. A more scientific term for leaky gut is increased intestinal permeability. Neither of these terms are official medical diagnosis but more and more studies are beginning to confirm that leaky gut is a real phenomenon and that it can indeed contribute to disease. To understand leaky gut, we first need to be clear about the normal physiology of the intestine. The small intestinal lining, also called the mucosa, creates the largest interface between the outside world and our internal bodies. It is folded into millions of finger-like projections called villi and microvilli, which, if unfolded, would equal the surface area of a tennis court. Picture it like a shag carpet with multiple folds. The villi act like an internal root system. In much the same way the roots of a plant absorb nutrients from the soil, the villi absorb digested food or nutrients from the small intestine. Under healthy circumstances, the small intestinal lining creates a boundary that allows nutrients from our food to be absorbed into the bloodstream, while at the same time blocking the absorption of undigested food, bacteria, pathogenic microorganisms, and toxins. Regulating what can or cannot be absorbed is a critical role of the cells lining the intestinal wall. In a healthy intestine, the adjoining cells form tight, impermeable junctions. These tight junctions will intermittently open, 
allowing the passage of nutrients into the bloodstream. Think of a garage door opener, which opens the garage door. You drive your car in, and then you close the garage door. With a leaky gut, the garage door remains open. Another way to think of the intestinal lining is like a cheesecloth. If you were to pulse some food in a blender and pour it through the cloth, the liquid would pass through, and the larger food chunks would remain on the other side. If the cheesecloth lining were to become damaged, larger particles from the small intestine would seep into the bloodstream. These particles could then activate the immune system and create problems throughout the body. The immune system actually reacts as soon as particles pass through the intestinal lining into the body. This is because 80% of the body's white blood cells reside in lymphatic tissue just under the intestinal villi. These white blood cells act as border guards and begin attacking any undigested food particles, bacterial toxins, or germs as they pass through the cheesecloth, as if they were foreign invaders. As the fight ensues, more collateral damage to the cheesecloth can occur as the war is being waged. This sets up a perpetual cycle of inflammation, leading to more inflammation and damage. Although leaky gut syndrome is often considered a quack diagnosis by mainstream physicians, it is becoming more accepted. More than 10,000 research papers have been written about intestinal permeability or leaky gut but it still remains somewhat of a medical mystery. What are the symptoms of leaky gut? As I mentioned at the beginning, leaky gut can produce symptoms of IBS, such as abdominal pain, gas, bloating, or altered bowel movements. However, it is important to note that about 30% of individuals with leaky gut have no digestive symptoms at all. Other conditions that can result from a leaky gut occur because of the systemic inflammation associated with this syndrome. Leaky gut can contribute to allergic conditions such as food allergies, hay fever, and asthma. It can contribute to autoimmune diseases such as celiac disease, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and psoriasis. It can contribute to skin disorders such as acne, rosacea, and eczema. It can contribute to chronic fatigue syndrome and even mood disorders such as anxiety, depression, and ADD. Leaky gut is strongly associated with a condition called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. If you suffer from any of these symptoms or conditions, leaky gut may be the root cause of your problem. So what causes the gut to be leaky? Diet, lifestyle, stress, and environment can all contribute to leaky gut, but three factors top the list. Foods, pathogenic microorganisms, and medications. First are foods. The most common irritant to the gastrointestinal tract is gluten, the protein found in wheat, rye, and barley. Other foods that can irritate the lining of the intestines include sugar, dairy, soy, corn, eggs, and any foods that are genetically modified, so-called GMOs. In my experience, gluten contributes to leaky gut in just about everyone. Ever since the 1990s, I have been recommending patients with IBS go on a gluten-free diet on a trial basis. My colleagues who work in conventional medicine often challenge me that the gluten-free movement is just a fad. I am quick to point out that celiac disease, which is the most severe form of gluten sensitivity, now affects 1 in 100 individuals. That is a rate that has increased from 1 in 3,000 some 30 years ago. This is an indisputable fact. How can this be considered a fad? Recently, there has been a new group defined as non-celiac gluten-sensitive individuals who experience a reaction to gluten but do not have actual celiac disease. By some estimates, this group may represent up to 30% of the population, but I believe the incidence is actually higher. 
A recent study published in the journal Gut found that non-celiac gluten sensitivity is not imagined. The study was led by researchers from the Columbia University. Researchers found markers in the blood that indicated a weakened intestinal barrier in those who experienced symptoms such as abdominal pain, bloating, and fatigue after eating wheat. They found biological evidence of leaky gut. In my experience, nearly 100% of patients who go off gluten on a trial basis end up feeling better and really notice adverse symptoms if they reintroduce gluten into their diet later on. Unfortunately, the only way to know for certain if you are a non-celiac gluten sensitive reactor is to try going gluten free and see how you feel. There are new functional medicine cutting edge laboratories that are doing testing to identify the non-celiac gluten sensitive patients. However, these tests are not currently accepted by mainstream medicine. In addition to gluten, there are many other digestive irritants in the diet. For example, many experts feel that the introduction of GMOs over the past few decades has been a major contributing factor in this seeming epidemic of leaky gut and its associated autoimmune and inflammatory conditions. Let's move on to the second important contributing factor to leaky gut, pathogenic microorganisms. This would include pathogenic bacteria such as Clostridium difficile and H. pylori. It also would include pathogenic forms of yeast or parasites. Overgrowth of pathogenic bacteria is more likely to occur after taking an antibiotic because the antibiotic inadvertently kills off the good bacteria, allowing bad bacteria to take over. This condition is referred to as dysbiosis and is commonly present along with a leaky gut. I often ask my patients, when was the last time you felt well? Many times, a course of antibiotics initiated their downward spiral towards poor health. The third factor that may lead to or perpetuate leaky gut is medications. Anti-inflammatories such as ibuprofen would lead that list. I often see a case where someone has a leaky gut from one cause, which then leads to systemic pain and inflammation, which then leads to daily use of ibuprofen which then feeds back in a vicious cycle to worsen the leaky gut. The medication used to suppress the symptoms actually fans the flames. How is leaky gut treated? Our protocol to heal a leaky gut is based on a concept that has been used successfully in functional medicine for years called the four R's. The four R's protocol involves removing anything that is making you sick, replacing anything you are deficient in, re-inoculating the gut with probiotics, and repairing any damage to the intestinal lining. The first of the four R's, remove, involves removing anything that may be causing gut inflammation. First, we recommend eliminating gluten, dairy, soy, corn, sugar, and GMOs for at least two weeks. Other gastrointestinal irritants in the diet might include coffee, alcohol, and additives in processed foods. The removal stage should also address any pathogenic microorganisms, such as yeast, bacteria, and parasites. We use medications or natural therapies to eradicate these microorganisms. In the case of yeast, for example, an anti-candida diet will virtually starve the yeast. A comprehensive stool analysis may be necessary to identify any harmful organisms that need to be eradicated. Anti-inflammatory medications such as ibuprofen should be removed. And finally, we recommend any techniques you can incorporate to reduce stress. Stress can be a profound irritant to the gastrointestinal tract, promoting gut inflammation and leaky gut. Always try and eat only when you are in a relaxed state. The second R, replace, 
is accomplished by adding back and replacing anything that will aid in normal digestion or might be lacking because of poor digestive health. For example, we need adequate amounts of hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes to break down and extract the nutrients from our food. We need to replace any vital nutrients that may become depleted as the result of leaky gut. Nutrient deficiencies can in turn lead to neurotransmitter imbalances, which can cause mood disorders. For example, vitamin B6 is required for converting the amino acid tryptophan to the neurotransmitter serotonin. Serotonin deficiency can lead to anxiety and depression. The third R, re-inoculate, involves reintroducing good bacteria or probiotics into the gut to establish a balanced gut flora. We need to reestablish a normal terrain or microbiome. This can be accomplished by taking a good probiotic supplement or eating fermented foods such as kefir, sauerkraut, kombucha tea, kimchi, or miso. In addition, prebiotics are foods that help to feed and nourish good bacteria in much the same way natural fertilizers help your garden grow. Lastly, the fourth R, repair, consists of taking specific nutrients to help support and nurture a healthy gut lining. We have refined a protocol over the past few years that is based on the principles of the four R's. We have treated hundreds of patients with what we refer to as the leaky gut protocol. As Hippocrates said some 2,000 years ago, all disease begins in the gut. I couldn't concur more, and we tell all our patients that sealing and healing the gut is the starting point on the road to optimal wellness. Thank you for listening.